Hello, you're listening to Turning the Turntables. I'm back, DJ Dr. Reggie B. Hopefully you've heard quite a few. We're still in COVID doing what we do and uh, we're gonna get creative. So this is the first time I'm actually doing this on Zoom. So we'll see how it looks when we put it out there on the YouTube channel. And today we are honored to have DJ B Blast. Uh, we're gonna get into his history, who he is, what he knows. Um, you know, I will say that there is a DJ uh, Facebook Live chat that goes on. It's global. And, and sometimes the conversations get real interesting. And uh, that's how I met DJ Blast. But the interesting thing is after we started talking, come to find out, I actually met him uh, a few months back while he was DJ, you know, at a party. So, <laughs> so, but I didn't know. So I put two and two together. And, uh, and here we are. So DJ B Blast, welcome to Turning the Turntables. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So B Blast, I mean, why why did you come up with that? DJ, how did you come up with your DJ name? Ah, good question. <laughs> and and I'm sure that's a hot topic with a lot of DJs who are probably coming up and getting started. And they're trying to figure out a name that's, you know, set themselves apart. So originally, uh, going back to like the mid 80s, um, I was basically a, a scratching DJ, made, you know, did some beats in the studio for a few groups and everything. But okay. back then, in my high school uh, days, I went by Innovative Ace. Um, and the reason why is because... Wait, let me repeat that. You said Innovative Ace. Yeah, my DJ name back then in the mid-80s uh -huh. uh, was DJ Innovative Ace. And okay. I used I had selected that name um, primarily because I was uh, introducing a lot of different techniques, scratching-wise, and as well as uh, uh, techniques where it comes to uh, backspin and beat juggling uh, back then. Even right, though, so keep in mind that you know, this is an educational one. So when you say beat juggling, I know what that means. But sometimes, oh, okay. Okay. you know, some of these new school, the new school DJs may not know what beat juggling is. Right. So it, it, in, in essence, the beat, beat juggling is uh, remixing a, a beat that's playing. And uh, instead of backspinning and just repeating that same hook or that uh, eight bar, uh, 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 one bar uh, uh, measure or whatever, you break it up and you kind of create your own beat out of it. So it's like you're turning turntables into a drum machine. Right. So you're basically keeping the same rhythm, or you can change up the rhythm, or you can slow it up, or you speed it up to be to become like techno. Techno. So and we're gonna get back to your name, but I am gonna say to the audience that uh, you know I've gone and listened to a lot of uh, DJ B Blast's music, and he's also a percussionist on the turntables. When you yeah. listen to him, he is playing like you know he's a percussionist. It's it's uh it's fun to watch. Right, right. And just, just to elaborate on the percussion side, um, folks think, you know, you know turntables, is, it's not really a musical instrument, but it actually is when you start to manipulate uh, records to not sound what's being played from that record. So in essence, yeah, we, we are instrumentalists. Um, in this case here, turntables. So back to the name. Yeah. So so the name, again, uh, I was just, you know, coming up with some uh, original technique and stuff, techniques and stuff, uh, where, where it came to scratching and stumbling on, if you will, a beat juggling, because I, I was not just backspinning and just replaying it, but it, it just turned into something different. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any material from then, but just to go even deeper on that, um, I actually didn't even own any equipment back then. Really? So I, I started practicing, I started, like I said, in the mid eighties, and it was off my mother's system and it was a Hitachi. Ah. <laughs> and, and what I did was I modified the balance so that it comes on the way I open up a fader. And in, in essence, it was actually open in reverse, not like a uh, traditional. So it was right, right. the way. So that's how I taught myself. But I was, you know, doing these scratches on people's demos and stuff and, and showing people stuff and off of one turntable. Now, um, when I was in the uh, 11th grade, there was a... Uh, a high school uh, expedition, talent expedition at Forestville High School. That's where I graduated. Forestville, uh, Forestville High School? For Forestville High School. All right, shout out to Forestville. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, there was a talent exp expedition. And uh, me and my buddy of mine, uh, his name is uh, Mike Carter. He go by um, Maestro Mike at that time. So, but uh, back then we were just improv on this uh, talent expo where I was uh, asking him to just uh, scratch to what you hear. I'm going to make up a beat. 
and and I'm, I've actually been trying to I've been kind of struggling trying so to. So wait a minute, when you say you're making up a beat, you mean as a human beatbox beat no, or no, on the turntable? I was actually on the turntable. Okay. That, uh, uh, a senior classmate allowed me to borrow his 1200s. And let me go deeper on that. Because again, I never owned any equipment. So when he allowed me to borrow these 1200s, um, I think it was a Gemini uh, mixer. I, I can't recall, but he let me borrow it. Now check this. When I got the turntables, I set it up in my mom's kitchen. It was an apartment. I was living in Penn Southern on Southern Avenue. Okay. So I put it up in the kitchen on the counter and I stayed on them things I think to like three or four in the morning, dark. I I, you know, all I had was just the lights from the turntable. I was just so. I know the man. The first time I ever touched twelve hundreds because I was used to SLB ones. Okay. You know, with the belt drives, right? Right. The first time I touched twelve hundreds and felt that torque. Yeah, man, I didn't want to stop. <laughs> I didn't want to stop because it, it, your answers were were being uh, adhered to, where you don't have no slowdown. It's you know, it's quick response when you let go of a record. So. You know that that was like more of a, a quick adjustment because I was like, uh, hey, these are just phenomenal. So, granted, to a twelve hundred, they've been around for decades. So, during that time that I, I was uh, using his equipment in my mom's kitchen, um, I came up with a routine uh, off of the uh, Father of the Leader album from Eric B and Rock Hill. Um, mm -hmm. I forgot the song, but once I play, I probably will remember the routine. So, that following morning, he picked up his stuff. I brought these records, and we was you know doing sound check at the gym, and I was like. Hey, y'all, let me show y'all something. So I was doing this, uh, uh, um, kind of like changing up the rock, the lyrics from Rock Him off one verse, and it was kind of piggybacking off of what I can do. So it, it was like almost like battle DJing, but I was just stumbling on something. And it was I was intrigued, and they were like, how'd you learn this? And the guy who let me borrow his turntable um, he was like, you learned that just now? Like last year? Yeah. So, you know. Hey, so, so you the modern day. Grandmaster Flash, because he stumbled across something. Yeah, he stumbled across stuff by, you know, and, and just going, you know, back and forth with the record and making the beat loop and Grand Wizard Theodore, just, you know, moving the record back and back and forth and just, you know, discover, discovered the term scratching. And it just played along from there and, and was, was you know, our, our forefathers when it comes to the styles of uh, turntables. So I'm liking the shirt that you got on, you know. Um, <laughs> This this is gonna go broadcast everywhere and people are gonna be seeing the shirt. Sure the sure so, the um where'd you get that from? Because I may go out and give me one. <laughs> now these I got three of them. And um I had got these shirts during the pandemic actually, and they came from overseas from Japan. It took months to get them though. So I'm I'm sure that they are probably still marketing them. A couple of people asked me where I got got these uh, baseball style jersey shirts um to have them customized and everything. So I actually move, oh, man. I saw it on Facebook um, because I was, you know, looking at a lot of different DJ uh, channels and stuff. So, you know how a lot of social media sites kind of piggyback on what you might like. So yeah. they throw in a commercial. So I saw it and was like, oh, that's dope. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if you can get the link or whatever, send it yeah, to me. I'll say that with you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to get into some questions, man. Sure. sure. Let's go. All right. So who are you? Um, in general, as a person, aside from a DJ? Ah, so Brian. Brian is a... Uh, yeah, who Brian? Who Brian be? Yeah, Brian. So Brian, he's a very very humble person. He's, he's a guy with uh, many many different talents um, in, a, in a sense of uh, when it comes to IT, which is my profession, um, as well as just uh, a very um, mechanically inclined. So what, what I mean by that is, is that, you know, I can do... Uh, landscaping work. I can I can do tile or electrical work. Um, um, point taken. I went to test electronics back in the uh, mid nineties, and you know when it, you know graduated like third in my class or whatever. Actually, okay. with the same guy with the same guy who uh, let me borrow his turntable back. At the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked to see him and everything. But yeah, so I'm, I'm a lot of different talents. Um, a, a lot of different uh, a lot of different things will inspire me um, to to better. What I've either what I've you know was introduced or what I'm trying to learn. So I, I have a I have a tendency to become stubborn into something where I, I try to master it or get close to it so I can move on to the next level. I'm um, I'm, I'm learning how to uh, I won't say master. I'm learning how to use OBS. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're okay. probably the master at it. I'm learning. Right. It. right. That's what's up. 
So, yeah, like, like I said, mechanically inclined, and and one of my passions um, before turntables, because again, I, I've been in the hip hop. Obviously, you know, for most most guys who you know in their mid forties, fifties, or whatever, they're gonna say Sugar Hill Gang. Um, so the rapid delight. So back then, when I was you know eight, nine, or whatever, and, and you know six or seven or whatever, so I was listening to stuff like that, and even just with you know my my family playing a lot of. Hope. Uh, uh, R&B music, you know, so I grew, I grew up from that era. So from there, it, you know, musically, um, it, it always been within me. So Okay, okay. So now, mm -hmm. what did your very first DJ setup look like? Oh, man. I, you know what? <laughs> I actually um, have a picture. I have a picture. Um, I think I shared it on Facebook. You did share. I think you shared it on Facebook. It, it was a, I had my pick. I had my, I had a flat top. I had a flat top is, you know, not as tall as kid from kid and play, but yeah, I had, I had a flat top and I had my pick, but in the background, there was a Pope, there was a uh, signed autograph of D nice. And uh, what was funny is that, uh, my uncle, and what year was this? What year? What year? Oh, man. Around, this, around. He came to Kip, uh, I think it was Kip Mill or Iverson in the store or whatever. And he was just, you know, doing a little promo for, uh, they called me D nice, you know, single. So, um, I didn't realize how tall he was. He stood a, kind of still just a few inches taller than me, but we kind of favored. And I was like, Dang, I wish I had a camera so we could take a picture of each other at that time because my uncle and a lot of other people saying, Man, you, you favor him. <laughs> so, yeah, but um, so, 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 what, what, what your sound system though, you remember what you had? What yeah, it looked yeah, like? So, again, the system I had was well, it wasn't mine, it did, it was my mom. And, and uh, what I did was when I was in art, um, not arts and craft in high school, but in the woodwork chart, chart, um, I was, um, you know, doing different projects just, you know, to get my grades and everything with that, uh, course. But one thing that the uh, uh, instructor asked me to do, well, boy, create something that you you know, that you can use. Right. So I built a uh, turntable coffin. <laughs> and and I uh, actually got some letters. Uh, when Actually, I got stencils and I penciled them out and then used the, uh, 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 a jigsaw to cut out the letters to spell out DJ Innovator 8. And it was in black. It was uh, 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 like almost like plexiglass uh, black uh, uh, material. Yeah. So um, the picture doesn't actually show that, but it, it, it actually, that was my setup at that time. So when people came over to my, my house at the time, they were like, all right, let me put this table on and see what you can do with it. So I was let it ride. And then whatever came out of me from there, they've just seen me working this belt drive turntable and the tuner balance control, which was plastic, right. <laughs> um, which broke also. I did not actually open them up and replace, you know, the, the balance fader inside. So I did a lot of Tinkering, I, I was right. definitely tinkering in my early days. So, but um, nonetheless, yeah, that's what they saw was you know this very um, minute, if you will, equipment. But I was making things sound like. I'm what year was that? Ah oh, man, we're talking like uh, between eighty, I say eighty six and eighty nine. Okay, so now yeah. with the so now fast forward. Fast forward. Your, your system now is like, I mean, I've seen a picture of it, but we're on camera. We're talking, right? Sure, so sure, sure. how do you feel about your system now compared to back oh, then? Hey, check this, though. Again, I never owned any, any equipment. I never owned any target. No DJ equipment. Um, and this set that I got here, I got actually two years ago. A year before that, I had bought another uh, uh, set up, uh, two uh, uh, 1200s and a uh, 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 rain 62. So I like that setup, but being that it was gray, it was that light gray, and it needed some work. It had a lot of you know scratches and everything, but it worked just fine. You so tricked it out. You tricked it out. Yeah. Well, so I, what, I, what I actually did was um, it came with uh, its own turntable uh, uh, cases. So I sprayed those, cleaned the turntables up as best as I could, and um, actually also had uh, contacted Rain to get a knob uh, replaced. So I actually went into the mixer. And replace the knob because you couldn't scroll through the music on it. Ah. I, loaded, I loaded up a video on that on uh, YouTube, and uh, I got, got a couple, couple responses off it. But yes, yeah, so I replaced the knob in it and fixed that knob, that scrolling knob on the uh, Rain 62. But I wound up selling that. And 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 what's funny is that the way I sold it, um, it was on a rainy day. I took the equipment in my truck into. Uh, I went down to uh, uh, I think it was uh, Springfield, Virginia, or whatever. So. 
guy was interested in getting the equipment, um, he liked the price. So I bought my power cord, hooked everything up, and um, I didn't have nothing to actually like play music. So I stopped at Best Buy, I got something to play music on, on the right. track. And, you know, so he can actually see that everything is playing through a, through a little uh, uh, Bluetooth speaker. So he was like, man, go ahead. I got it. Go ahead. Take, take, I, I take this stuff right now. So so those. So I just like waited a little bit, again, looking on Marketplace on Facebook and came across these 1210s. And um, and this these here were out in uh, 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 Rockville. Okay. So, so from there, I was like, you sold on these. These are much cleaner. So I, from there, I just went on and bought a coffin for it. I got a turntable stand for it and some more accessories just to kind of get the package more complete. Yeah. So, and actually, what I'm trying to say is I started owning a DJ equipment just about three years ago. And one, of these, one of these days, I want to get you over my studio. And, and I'm about to be 50. You're about I'm to be 50. 50. Yeah, I'm about to be see, 50. That's unusual because that's unusual. you've been DJing. For right. since you know the eighties, early eighties, right? And you DJ professionally, right? And, and you're good, you know. Right. And you just got your equipment. <laughs> Man, wait, wait till you come to my studio. I got I got equipment that's older than you. You know, <laughs> right. hey, that's what's up, man. That's good. So that's now, good. um, all right. So we're gonna shift with some more questions. Why do you still like DJ? Oh man, it, it it's uh, soothing. It's uh, it's soothing mentally. It's a workout physically, um, and, and I stress physically because um, when, when you try to put eye-hand coordination to what you're hearing and you're trying to perfect it, you, you, you're in steady concentration mode. So weirdly enough, I, I put so much energy into it until, you know, I got to come out of my clothes and take a shower. Look, so I, put, I put a lot of energy into it. I, um, every, every DJ set, place I've ever DJed, at least in the past, I want to say 30 years, I always have a fan with me. You're right. always. Right. Right. <laughs> cool right. me right. off, man. I, the dance floor, they could be out there sweating like crazy. I'm going to be cooled off. I heard that. So, so I get it. I get it. Now, so um, what have you learned over the years about DJing that you would like to share with others? Oh, man. Um, I mean, like, there's, there's so many great DJs or turntablers, those who are practicing the art of turntablers. Um, I mean, like from battle DJs, you know, to those who are just, you know, playing a gig and everything. Um, I mean, like the, the inspiration, you know, goes so far. I mean, with those who are DMC champions or, or uh, new music seminar champions and stuff like that, I don't need to go into names, but, you know, it, it's just. Uh, I'll, I'll give one, like Qbert, that was my boy. Yeah, Qbert, Qbert is a master scratcher. Um, he's he's like the well, master, he's a god of scratch. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, I mean, like he does things, he makes things, he makes things happen with the turntables that I I just can't do that. <laughs> and a lot of other people, I mean, I can't do what scratch DJ scratch or uh, I try to try to get close to it. And in actuality, um, and I tell people this too, is that YouTube is probably the best teacher for free at this at this day and age. Um, DJ yeah, Lady Styles, true. man, one of the baddest yeah. female DJs out there. Yeah, yeah, and actually, I, I sent the message to uh, 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 DJ Sophie. Mm -hmm. That girl is fire. Yeah, <laughs> she is fire. <laughs> she is legit. <laughs> so, when you hear the term mixtape, what does that mean to you? Um, you know, that's just uh, those who uh, want to, you know, create their own uh, sound in the sense of uh, either music that they actually put into production. And they probably got some another artist or whatever to sing or, or lay down some rhymes on top, or or in the case of just beat blending, where they'll take somebody else's uh, record and get the, the uh, acapella version and, and put their beat to it, or or just trying to make a, 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 a compose a, a complete set onto a tape so that you don't you know have to deal with the commercials or the same songs on the radio, you know. So, so old school DJs when they hear the term mixtape. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, physically. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Max or TK, hey, no, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I still got some of my own that I'm trying to digitize. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, um, let's let's get into the uh, the roots and the traditions of DJ. So, for instance, are you a bedroom DJ or a basement DJ? You know, when you first started. 
Uh, well, if, if you, if you want to classify as to locations. Yeah, because, um, you know, so, I mean, you know, you grow up, right? Somewhere right. in your house, you got to figure it out. Right. Right. So I'm, I'm, my stuff is in my bedroom. I don't keep it out where it's able to be accessible, if you will. So, right, right. Yeah. No, but like when you was a teenager, when you was a teenager, well, you borrowed equipment and you used equipment. Yeah, I borrowed equipment. So I, I, when I was growing up, I, I lived with my mom and we just stayed in an apartment for several years from there. So it was either um, in, in, in the uh, dining area, which is right, which was right by the balcony, or in this case, when I, uh, the guy let me borrow his, his 2 I set things up in the kitchen only just for a one-nighter. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. right. That's yeah. generous because I don't loan out my twelve hundred. Right, that's why I was saying, <laughs> and take 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 into consideration these are twelve hundreds back in the you know the the early nineties, late eighties. They were expensive. They still you know, are. They still are definitely. <laughs> actually, the price on them, they, they they're still highly marketable. Now I'll tell you what. Mm -hmm. Back in the eighties, the early eighties and the seventies, um, I remember Technique twelve hundreds. Were very expensive, two hundred and seventy-five dollars. Right, right, right. Now, now you get them for twelve hundred dollars, two thousand dollars. You know, maybe eight hundred dollars if you're lucky. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's why. That's why I stayed into the market of you know, give me, let me go and get something used and get close to something that's very well kept. So I was lucky, lucky to find this set. Um, in, in the sense of how it was kept, because it, it actually came with covers, and, and the guy never took it out of his uh, apartment. Um, he was a, a, um, a local DJ that he went to different uh, hotels and, and did uh, uh, provided music for different uh, sex, sex segments there. And right, right. But uh, yeah, he kept this stuff uh, pretty well maintained. So, I'm like, hey, That's good. Going so, so now, you know, there are all types of DJs, right? So I'm just going to throw out a few words, and then from there, you just kind of fill in the blanks of what kind of DJ you are. So sure. um, we talk, you know, there are house party DJs, block party DJs, just local DJs, uh, DJs that travel mobile, radio DJs, MC rappers, DJs at clubs. What, what do you consider yourself in terms of, you know, your main gigs? Okay, so... As far as gigs, I actually started um, show, showcasing or allowing people to hear me and see me in person at a car event that's soon to start up uh, up in Upper Marble. And, uh, and actually, it, it was uh, more- well, We can plug that. It's off of Route 301, right? Okay, yeah, Route 301 and Route 4 uh, at the um, Advanced Auto Parts. So that's yeah. gonna start- Right, right behind the Ford uh, dealership? Right behind the Ford dealership. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's gonna start up every Wednesday between five and nine, uh, I believe on April seventh. But um, but it it actually started with me going to do that, um, deciding to do that. Uh, there was a DJ or still is, and uh, he played a lot of old school stuff uh, from all the CDs or or whatever. And and I mean, like everything was okay at the at, at that time. So when I asked him to, um, I want to do a, a a birthday set for a guy who was, I believe, he was turning eighty. Uh, I think he was turning 83 at the time, and, and nice. his name was Willie. His name was Willie, and uh, he, he's a fun guy from, from mm -hmm. Carolina. And, right. Uh, he, he's in the cars hard, has a zero sits, and it, it's banging. But um, I wanted to do something special for him, you know, because, you know, at his age and how enthused he was every time he came to the event, like, I just want to do something special. And so right. I was like, hey, let me go ahead and get that. I just needed to borrow a generator at the time. So I, I was able to borrow his generator. And I just went on and spun records uh, throughout the night. He enjoyed it. I gave him shout outs. Uh, people, other people gave him shout outs and everything. And it was a great night. And uh, I believe that was, uh, I think in August of last year. Okay, know. okay. So from there, I was, you know, basically getting, you know, drop a drop in the ear about, hey, why don't you come back again? You know, hey, are you gonna come back the, the next couple of Wednesdays and everything? Right, so, they like it down. It, it kind of turned into something like people are just like more so uh, uh, expecting me to, you know, perform there. And it was cool with me, um, even though, you know, it's free. I was doing it for free and I was more so getting exposure. And at the same time, um, I'm in the cars. So it, it what's even it, <laughs> what's even more funny about it is I bring my equipment, everything uh, right now with a generator and 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 a soon to be uh, hopefully a, a, a Trans Am that's running low nines. <laughs> okay, but, but but I load everything up in this Trans Am, uh, which which is my street car and, and show car, or whatever. 
And uh, people are just amazed to see that I got 15 inch, you know, uh, uh, EVs in there, a, a, a generator, <laughs> a mixer, the stand, hey, laptop, everything. Dude, back back hey. in 84, 5, 6, 7 time frame, yeah. I rolled everything in a Honda LX Accord. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I did my gigs with a Honda LX Accord, man. You make it fit. So, yeah. Um, what's the worst experience you ever had, DJ? Oh wow, worst experience. Oh man. Uh, you know what? The the worst the worst experience is just not having equipment and yearning to, to get it at that time where I just didn't I couldn't afford it. Yeah, uh, and uh, this, and again, we're going back to when I was, you know, in school and everything. And even after I graduated, I was um, looking at towards going to the same uh, school that my friend uh, DJ Maestro Mike was was attending, and it was the uh, Art Institute of Philadelphia, and uh, taking up uh, studio engineering courses. But my problem was that I didn't have any residency. I couldn't stay. I couldn't. I didn't. I couldn't afford to stay there and go to school there. So I went on to join the service. Went in the army. And 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 then get back into actually one of the tables for several years, decades even. So, like I said, I just just I actually got my own equipment in the last three years. So, and here I'm about to be fifty this year. So, you know that that there was a, 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 a kind of it was upsetting when I think about it because I, I, I had plenty of opportunities in my twenties, thirty. Right to, to uh, get it, but I had other responsibilities. Right. And it is just didn't, you know, it wasn't the time. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't uh, know you back then. I, yeah. I, I'm born and raised in Philadelphia. Oh, that's what's up. And uh, that's where I started DJing in Philadelphia, yeah. WDA, oh, okay. SFM and all that. And, right, right. And I know where Philadelphia, where the Art Institute is in Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's small world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. But Philly is hard to get started if you're not from Philly to DJ. Oh, I bet. I bet. It's, it's, <laughs> you have to go get ridiculed. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what's the best experience you ever had as a DJ? Oh, man. This this here is like the best experience. Just being able to just play and play music the way I like to play it. And people enjoy it. And... And, and to some degree, it, it is a lot of work on my behalf because it's a lot of equipment that's bugging back and forth. But you know, the end result is I see people enjoying themselves, dancing, and everything. So you know, that's that's a great feeling. You know, even even to the degree of just sharing um, on Facebook to others, you know, different routines that I just perhaps came up with. You right. know, for that for that you know that first time hearing a song, and I'm like, let me share this and see what, what kind of feedback I get. You know, because. I don't have people, you know, especially during the pandemic, nobody's talking through the house, it's, you know, so I can show people what I can do and everything. So either that or I just wait for the uh, 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 car show season to start up and on Wednesday and uh, perhaps at the uh, Maniki uh, Giant on uh, Thursdays as well. Across the street? Uh, and, uh, beside uh, Wendy's. So okay, okay. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to seeing you live, man, again. Yeah. So finish this sentence. I'm going I'm to start the sentence. You got to finish it. If I were not, if it were not for DJing, if it were not for DJing, I would be. Oh, <laughs> I'll still be bright. No, for real. If it wasn't for DJing, I would. <sighs> I, I'll still be the same person. I, I, I still have that humble uh, personality and everything. Um, but, you know, my like I said, my talents is, is whatever I really put my hands uh, and mind to. I'm going to really dive into how it works, how I can perfect it, so I can uh, call it my own. Like, I did this, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, like, if it, ain't, if it wasn't for DJing, I, I definitely still have the love for music because I'm, I'm just musically inclined with, you know, different genres of music. So, with, with that being said, and that, that kind of adds to uh, how I, I go so far and beyond when it comes to just mixing or blending music. I'll cover all kinds of different genres of music. I heard you. I heard you. I heard you do like a two or three minute something a couple of days ago. I'm like, what's he playing? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was playing, I was playing, uh, yeah, I was playing that sample. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, you know, I, I like, I like also, I like to do that too, is kind of give people, uh, edu uh, educate people when I'm trying to mix where right. I'll play, uh, play the, the, the part that a, a person may sample, a group may sample, and play the original 
and try to blend it in and and then try to you know do something extra with the original just to yeah i like doing that too because a lot of folks don't even know that there is really an original I mean, right, you know, right it's like um vanilla ice 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 baby you know um that's under pressure i mean in the whole yeah. album that song is nice if you just listen to the whole thing yeah. um yeah. Yeah. yeah so um you you keep mentioning that you're humble right so you know i've been djing for a while and i know a lot of djs just like you know a lot of djs and most of us go through our big ego you know curve you know i'm a star i'm the man i'm i'm i remember when i was djing in new york i was djing at the major clubs i dj for rick james i dj oh, for tina marie stephanie up. mills temptations yeah. luther even billy paul i did his 25th anniversary in philly so my head was like, you know, right, right, I right. walk in the room, I'm DJ Dr. Reggie B. And it took a while to just get the Reggie back. And I'm just a bilateral primate creature that just, you know, happens to know how to DJ. Right. Did you go through any of that? <laughs> I'm, all, I'm sitting up and laughing because uh, sometimes me and my wife, uh, we, we go into, you know, a little debacle about, you know, what I like to do and what I see others doing. And, and it's like, hey, they, that's their lane, but you know, I, I consider this as being a passion of mine. So I try not to, you know, I definitely don't want to point no fingers, but it's like this. If, if you if you if you call yourself a DJ, then then so be it. But those those who call themselves a DJ get it mixed up with just playing music and actually uh owning a set where you actually control the crowd, not just by playing something that the person likes, but you know, just put put something that sets you apart as to what you're playing, because what you're playing can be heard on radio, YouTube, off somebody's phone from iTunes or whatever. The so set set yourself apart, and that's that's my only distinction. Where when it comes to uh, uh, turntables and DJs and those who work work vinyl versus controllers and stuff like that, like all right, if, if that's your if that's your that's what you want to partake in, well. Try to take ownership of it and set yourself apart from others. Like, what, what, what's the distinction of you being who you are working right, at? The right. But I'm gonna ask that question again. Did you get a big ego at any no, time? No, I mean, like, that, that, uh, I, I, I didn't mean to allude that, but uh, <laughs> I only said, like I said, with the debacle is, 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 you know, those who just spend, and I feel like I'm putting so much energy in, and I know I can do way better than these guys that you know, on the radio or whatever, and they're going back and forth with different songs, and, you know, doing, you know, like uh, a song. It's a playlist. It's a playlist. They, they're doing playlists. They, they, yeah. So I'm like, hey, I like the old school way when, you know, you turn on B103 or, you know, back in the day when you had DJs just really play records and they, they like, you know, changing it up. Like they you never, not, Yeah, you never know what's going to come next. I mean, right, right. they pull exactly. something way out of the crates. Right. That's what I'm about. I, I'll surprise you. And thinking that this is about to slow down. No, we're about to hit you with something else. You know, so I, I try as much as I put a, a workout into what I do. I want to see people working it out based on what they're hearing. Right. So I, I, I try not to demonstrate that ego, but but this is my dis, uh, disposition is that, like I said, three years ago, I just got equipment. So I, I stressed to my wife so much is that if I had this back in my 15, 13 year of age, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I, I, it's tr it's the truth because right. at, at this point in time where I'm, you know, taking ownership for what I, uh, I project for people to see and hear, I can only imagine 20, 25 years ago what I could have been, you know, doing and learning and perfecting from then up to now. Yeah. Um, I, I, because again, um, when it, being I was going to the studios and everything, you know, laying down some scratch people and uh in, in case in point came very close a couple of times to signing a, a record label right right um and I, and actually to go even further uh i was going to v um not v one three but uh, wll we all for love where dj conan was uh working a set there and i was going there just to you know get some information as to you know how what what makes you be uh uh a uh, 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 disc jockey for a radio station and, and just picking up some pointers from there and just really, really, you know, really just... Sound like you were hungry. You you were hungry. I was hungry. I was hungry because, I mean, like, again, hip-hop was my passion. 
uh, a beatbox back then and did some beatbox battles. He did. Radio and everything. All right, so can you give us like seven seconds? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> you got me on the spot here. Yeah, hey, right. This is turning the turntables. This is what I do. All right, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man. It's starting to come back to you. I'm going to do one uh, from uh, uh, Rob Bates, show, but that's okay. <laughs> so, so, what are some of the benefits you've received from DJing? I'll give you an example. So, as a DJ, right, you know, you get access to a lot of stuff. Um, of course, girls, you know, business relationships, connections, opportunities, deals, recognition, growth. So, you know, development. What, what kind of uh, benefits have you received from DJ? A pat on the back. <laughs> Literally, I mean, a pat on the back. Like, you doing your thing, man. You showed up, man. You did your thing. I like what you do. You coming back again? Word. That's it. <laughs> That's cool. So, have you had to interact with any celebrities as a DJ? Nah, nah, I haven't. I haven't got to that. Uh, well, I, I would say to the, I would say back in the early hip hop age, uh, back in the golden era. Yeah, I had I had some interaction with uh, like Monty. I went to. Uh, um, I think it was a 90, 92. I had went to, uh, what is that? The radio, I forgot the name of it. Um, that actually was James Brown was living. I took a lot of pictures. Mary, Mary J. Lodge, James Brown, New Edition, Mob, okay. I sat with Mob D and we was just popping bottles. And everything. It was, it was fun. It was fun. I That's cool. cool. <laughs> so do you feel like, you know, DJs are unsung heroes and don't get enough credit? Well, it, it, depending on the level of DJing, because I, I stress that only because, you know, you can have those just holding a red cup, you know, and just playing go-go or whatever you are, and just, you know, swooning the crowd that way. And then right. you have those who, you know, they're like this here, you know, and they just working it out and doing tricks and stuff. I'm like, I want, I want to showcase what I can do and, and give y'all a show. Right. You know, so, so uh, I say that to say, because um, me and my man, again, Mike, we went out to uh, uh, see the uh, 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 Vinyl Destination uh, tour with DJ Scratch and, and Jazzy Jeff um, at the last show, actually, uh, a couple of years ago. And um, it, it was dope. And that's what I wanted to see. I want to see turntablism, you know, at its, at its peak, at the, at the top, you know. So that, I came out at horse, my knees and feet were, <laughs> I, I was so turned up because, to me, they were rock stars, and and and, and I was just absorbing all. Oh, I was actually playing along with them in my mind, like, "Watch, gonna break it in, he's breaking in, he's gonna do it, keep it, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, do it again." I was just, I was just so blown, you know. So, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I I caught it afterwards, you know, the video playback. I wasn't there, right? But, right. Um, I mean, just being in that environment, man, right. of turntable instrumentalists. Actually, you're the first DJ that uh, I've interviewed who basically say, and you know, I, I have a lot of equipment, right? You know, I have four tech 1200s and, right. you know, I have the latest rain system. So, you know, and then I have the controller. So whatever it is that, you know, you need to use to DJ, I probably have it, right? Right. And you're like, I bring my own stuff. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I got stuff so you don't have to lug your own. You know, right. I'm trying to be, you know, courteous that you don't right. have to bring, and you're like, nah, and, and, and I respect that because, you know, it's like having your own guitar, right? It's like yeah. having your own saxophone or whatever. Right. You want to play your instrument. Right. And see, that, that was the distinction I was trying to, uh, you know, articulate is that when, when I'm so used to, you know, operate for a particular type of tool, I don't, I don't want that ratchet. I want my ratchet to turn, you know, uh, uh, to change out of an alternator or put a can trap in if I'm talking about automotive. But I'm just so used to this equipment till, you know, uh, and let me elaborate again. So I'm not, I'm not sure if you heard of DJ Chuck B. Mm -hmm. He was a local DJ, I, I guess, but he had a uh, talent competition that was held at the classics. Um, geez, I think back in uh, 91, I think. So uh -huh. they, they had they had their own turntables up and everything. So they were sitting too too low for me. So uh, uh, yeah. we put it on some crates and stuff, but then that actually made things even Yeah, because now it's not stable. It's not yeah. stable. Highly unstable. The table was just, you know, very, very loose already. Uh, so I couldn't do much of anything. And this was a video. So I was like, dang, this is the last time 
that I do anything that's um, uh, requiring me to showcase what I can do with somebody else's equipment at that time. So that's I get it. That, that that's what stuck in my head, and that's why I kind of played into the fact like I want to get my own and use my own whenever I can. So okay, no, yeah. that made sense, man. I respect that. Appreciate so it. So we're, we're going to shift a little bit um, into the DJ state of mind, right? Right. So there are a lot of people out there who, who party to a DJ. And there are a lot of people out there who listen to our music, right? We're everywhere now. We're on Mixcloud, SoundCloud, YouTube, Twitch, right. you know, you name it, we're out there, right? Right. And then there are DJs that listen to other DJs, you know, but then there's the DJ state of mind. Oh. Um, and, and when I say that, because in addition to that, there's that zone that you get into. Yeah. Yeah. And some people can tell when you're in that zone and some people don't care because they just dance. Tell me about, or, uh, and the audience, you know, the listeners, what's the DJ zone? What's that state of mind? It's, it's when you subliminally get into a, uh, uh, um, your own um, world where you're not even seeing anybody in front of you. You're just only hearing the music and you're seeing what's being played to make that music come out the speakers. And, and you're just steadily diving into it and you're just riding on this file and you're just making, you know, making, taking turns, doing loops. Uh, hey, I'm going to go visit this place. Oh, I forgot I'm here DJ, you know? So it's like you, you just, you know, you slip into this place where you're so comfortable. Um, and, and to some degree that has happened with me where I just go into a segment or go ahead and do this real quick. And then, you then know, you some, then you apologize. It, well, well, what happened is some of the cats would get up and say, let the song play, let the song play. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, I'm like, just go ahead and just get, get my phone and hook up, hook up the speaker then. <laughs> right, right, right. Because I'm like this. Every time I touch the turntable, it's not like I'm trying to show off or like, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm here, nobody can touch me, I'm ready to battle, whatever. No, I do this at, on a norm. So I'm not going to just let the music play. Even though I like that record, but I'm not going to just let the music play. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to mix it up. You know, well, I'm not going to play all the way through or whatever. So I'm going to go into my own zone where, where again, I'm going to define what I'm playing as being my own. So it's not just music that you're hearing. You're hearing me. Right. No, I, my, I respect that. I mean, every but, DJ has a style right and if you've been djing for a long time you have a style that fits with you know what feels good to you um you know i, I know some folks that can't scratch can't strike you know don't even really you know use the crossfade or anything like that they don't use any drops they don't use anything right they just blend and blend and you know to some extent a lot of the um house djs do that right house music right. um and it's good. I love it. I mean, I got I got a couple of house music DJs that um I follow and every now and then a couple of them come over here and teach me that style because you know they're, they're like, let it breathe, right? Because you know, I want to get into it and, and just right. make it talk a little bit. And they, no, Reggie, let it breathe, let it breathe, let it breathe. And that's hard for me, you know. And so but but there was a different style. So I, I definitely appreciate your style. So thank you, thank you. I'm I'm gonna um I'm going to take you to school for a second. Sure. Um, and basically, it's a test. So I'm going to give you an either or test. This is real simple. So I'll give you an example of how this is going to go. Um, old school or new school? Pick one. <laughs> old school. All right. Um, techno or house? I like it. Huh? I say house. I like house. I like old school. All right. 70s rap? or 80s hip hop, there's a difference. Yes, there is, and, <laughs> and like, you know, the, the golden era is, is where I'm at, I love the 80s. All right, and we're gonna circle back around and let you get into hip hop a little bit. Um, so rock and roll or country? <laughs> I play more rock and roll than so I'll go to rock. But new country, man, New country is, is new country is, starting to sound like hip hop. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> right. All right, soft rock or blues? Blues. Okay, go go or bounce music? <laughs> go go. 
No, I think he's gonna say that. I mean, you had your audience, <laughs> watching, right? <laughs> Can you imagine your audience see this and you say bounce music? I'm going. They're gonna send you down to New Orleans. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> um, reggae or Latin? I like reggae, but Latin Latin is Latin is is bad going. <laughs> <laughs> Latin is dope, no doubt. I, I love Latin, no doubt. Um, re- God, God. <laughs> I, oh man, that's that's. A time. <laughs> I told you it's a test that's question. A time, <laughs> that's the time. I mean, yeah, case in point. I, I don't understand. You know, I can't speak Spanish, but it's just a rhythm section. Oh my God, and the horns, man, you're killing me. <laughs> right. So, all right. R&B or funk? I like funk. You like funk? I like funk. Well, R&B, funk. R&B is good. R&B is good. Funk, funk, funk can, you know, funk can, it, it, you, get, it, you can get nasty with funk. Yeah, you can get nasty with R&B, but that's, you know, in most cases, you know, real slow song. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you. I grew up on funk. So, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of people don't even know what funk is now. No, they don't. You know, but if they don't you know, know what funk is, they don't you know can't help yourself. Or... <laughs> I mean, know. Brass Construction, Barcade, yeah, George yeah. Duke, you know, Cameo. I mean, yeah. shit. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, that's what I rock. I rock a lot of those. I, I mean, rock, I, 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 got, I got some funk right here, man. Shoot. <laughs> um, classical or jazz? Jazz. All right. Triple triple uh, word, but or triple uh, category. So Facebook Live, Instagram, or YouTube channel. <laughs> well, uh, I spent most of my time with Facebook Live. I, I honestly just uh, signed up to restream too, so I, I don't know where I'm gonna go at with it. But you know, I'm just wanna just you know perhaps dive into that realm since you know Facebook Live is you know heavy on the copyright laws, so. So, you know, there are other um, platforms that you can use where you can supersede in the sense of getting copyrighted, you know, infringement on what you're playing. I I mean, I'm always replying back to Facebook with my uh, standard line, and they let me have it a lot of times. Right. But you should reply back. I mean, I I hear a lot of DJs in Boston. um, Sometimes people are showing up at the door, and I'm like, well, if they send you 100 disclaimers, and you don't reply to any of them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're going to go ahead and execute what they're going to do. Yeah, you know, at least tell them you're sorry. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, I'm looking at Mixed Cloud. I'm thinking about well, having an account. Yeah, I don't. And then that way I can DJ for five, six hours and don't get cut off. Right, right, right. So that's another platform as well Twitch. And is yeah. there, there are a lot of them out here. So, yeah. All right, here we go Vinyl or Serato? I, I'm Serato. I mean, that's that's what that's what I've learned all, all all my skills to this you know to this point uh, since three years ago. So once I uh, got my twelves and started getting a bunch of music from uh, 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 DJ Pools, um, there was one site I had bought. Uh, Jesus, uh, close to I don't know, like six gigs of music, and um, and hey, Serato, I signed up with it and I haven't turned back. So I, I'm not going to change up. Turntables or CDs? Uh, turntables. <laughs> All right. Turntables or controllers? Turntables. All right. Powered speakers or amps and wires? I like the power speakers. I have uh, four EVs. I, I want to do the uh, QSCs, but the power speakers are, are less. less it, it, it gives you uh, uh, less equipment to haul around, too. That's true. And I'm old school, so I'm learning new things, too. Right. So, you know. Uh, as a matter of fact, back in the day, man, we used to use 12 volt batteries for our light systems because the light systems came from cars. Right. Okay. Police, police cars, tow trucks. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just something to power them up, which, which right. is hey, hey, that's innovative. Hey, you, you, you're making it. You're making it work the way they have to, you know, work for you. So that's dope. Yeah. So on that on that level, DJ and lights or no lights. Lights, uh, lights are good. I mean, it, it helps set the tone um, when, when it comes to like a club setting or those who are, you know, used to going in, inside and they seeing the lights and hearing the sound and perhaps even smoke or whatever. And it just goes along with, 
that whole um, aura. I didn't think about the fog machine and the smoke. Yeah, so that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. That's a good point, the ambiance. Yeah. So yeah. work the work the mic or not necessary? I work the mic. It's it's not as much um, only because if you, you, be want, busy. If you be busy. I'd be busy, but if, if you want to hear people talk, then you know you turn on the radio. <laughs> True. True. All right. So, um, dance right away, or warm up the crowd for an hour. Um. <laughs> I, I, I kind of hesitate because I, I like to go right into it and just get people going. Um, <laughs> I'm, going I'm going in a sense because uh, I, me and my wife, we host uh, cookouts, which right. we haven't been in the, in the past year or whatever. Yeah, but, those you got to warm up. They like to warm up. <laughs> like to warm up. So in, in the essence, as, as we're you know, doing cookouts, and we'll have a, what's about 100, 100 130 people um, in the yard. In, 131 now, 131, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so i'm you know i'm just playing music but i'm also cooking too so i'll just let something just play for a long time right go -go or, or whatever and just let it play but i'm also cooking so i'm just making sure that you know the food is adequate as far as hot food and, and then as well as making sure people are on the dance floor you know after they don't got their stomachs all full so yeah so warm up the crowd definitely so that takes me to another question that's pretty good in line with what you just talked about Huge ballrooms of a thousand or more people or clubs less than 200? <laughs> I wish I had the opportunity um, to rock, rock a thousand plus. Um, okay. okay. And, and I stress that because me and my wife, you know, we went to uh, see Jill Scott at the MGM um, with my mom and her best friend. And um, it was a great show. Prior to Jill Scott actually uh, coming on the forum, um, she had like a DJ that was playing some music and everything, kind of, you know, hype up the crowd or whatever. Right. So at that time, and going back to one of your other quest questions about, you know, being big headed um, and, and full of myself, I'm listening to this guy and it's a lot of people in this audience and I'm, I'm hearing what he's doing and, and yet it, it's just... It's he wasn't just, hitting it. He wasn't hitting it. It's like, he, he's not really putting passion. I would put passion. I would have tore that place down. And, and being that this is, you know, D.C., all, all I need to do is throw in like a good three three hits from either Rare Ashes or Chug or, or or something that's you know hitting on the radio right now and really blast it out from there and just and then set it apart from you know uh, before she actually performed. But you know, getting back to what I was hearing, it just kind of you know it's like just disgusted, if you will. So you might as so well put a CD on, huh? Pre mix you might as well put a CD on and then just talk over it and then right. just switch to another song, you know. So yeah. So now, outdoor events or indoor events? What is your preference? Um, I think indoor events will give a better, uh, you'll get better sound quality because of how sound will bounce off the walls and everything. But but outdoor events, um, I mean, like that that kind of just leaves it up, up, up open for those who, you know, not willing to pay to get in and they, they just, you know, uh, uh, taking in the free music, if you will, or free right. performance that I'm giving. And I'm, I'm appreciative to that as well. As long as, you know, they, they up and dancing or clapping or giving me a handshake or a pat on the back and, and they like what they're hearing and, and keep, keep telling me to keep doing what I'm doing, then that's, you know, that's that, that's a gratification for me. So get that. And that kind of goes into the next question because you're talking about listening to people, listening to you for free. A contract every time, sometimes, or it doesn't matter. If we're talking money, you yeah. got to have a contract because if, if, if something doesn't go the way that you was expected, if monetary wise, then you can hold that person responsible versus word of mouth or going about what was said and remembered or whatever you want to call it. So contract definitely, unless you're in complete ownership of doing it for free or how it's going to be, you know. Right. That. So what's your thoughts on female DJs? Uh, awesome. Um, it's no different than me watching. Um, and, and I'm about to. <laughs> your wife in the background. She's not here. No, she's not here. <laughs> I didn't want to put my foot in my mouth by saying, you know, something else. But it's it's dope to see DJ, uh, female DJs. It's dope for me to see, you know, females just doing things that's heavily dominated by a male perspective. So it could be, you know, automotive or, 
or, or mechanical or welding or plumbing or electrical. It's dope, you know, absolutely. Okay. So shout out, shout out, shout out to our first vice black president, Kamala Harris. There you go. <laughs> yo, yo. So um beer or spirits? What do you like to drink? I, I, I'm into spirits. I, <laughs> I, I do coolers or whatever, or uh, to, to some degree, some some shine. Or... <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Wait till we get out of this COVID. We'll hang. Right. And right. so, all right, to that extent, um, brown or white? And I'm not talking about women. <laughs> brown. Brown. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, under thirty crowds or over thirty crowds? Dang. And, and that's an interesting point you brought up. So when I was uh, last, like last year, I had uh, younger cats who were, you know, just coming to spectate the cards and everything. And, um, you know, they, they were approaching me and said, how come y'all play no younger music? I'm like, I got some younger music. I just don't see a, a lot of younger people. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that, that's where I'm, I'm just getting a visual. So my when, when I'm performing, I'm not just having my face in the laptop or on the, on the vinyl and, and, and my mixer all the time. I'm, I'm looking, I'm panning the crowd for pretty much every song right and i'm seeing what what the reaction is and and to the to go even further i will you know make an announcement and get their response about if they're enjoying what they hear um even even accepting some requests if if it's in if it's in the bpms then i understand I, right I'll, I'll go ahead and entertain it. absolutely because I'm, I'm very i'm very interactive so 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 with that being the case because I, I want that response i want to know what I'm doing is what you appreciate. Right. So, so absolutely. I, I mean, like, I try to entertain the younger crowd, but I'm, you know, again, I'm about to be 50. Those who I hang around in right, my age range are much older. So I'm going to entertain them first. All right. So now here we go. Uh, R&B or hip hop? I'm, I'm hip hop. Why? I'm hip -hop. I'm hip -hop. So talk, talk to me about hip hop. Give me a little, give me a little history on hip hop, who you are as a hip hop artist. Uh, DJ, yeah, hip hop. Hip hop is one of the elements to. Uh, I mean, uh, DJ is one of the elements in, in, in the hip hop culture. And 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 I mean, like there are others that uh, I partake in in my early time, in my early you know younger age. But but DJ and DJ and just um, it, again, it puts me into a zone where I'm I feel complete and 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 hip hop kind of molded me to to that platform if you will in, in that uh, artistry of dj um so i mean like hip-hop goes back for again back into the early 80s and memorizing the sugar hill game rappers are like all word for word for all three artists you know and, and then going even further up up the line when when microphone thing or the, or go back a little bit uh move the crowd rock him and Eric B came on and i was just so uh um uh, uh so, so thrown back by this change in hip hop, so it just it caused me to gravitate it, gravitate into it even even deeper to to actually uh, really dive into either beat making or DJing or just performing in front of front of a crowd when you're with a group. Because right. it, it, it kind of embodied and hip hop was embodied into me when when I started hearing it. I just it, it, again, it molded me. So, well, you—I mean, you said it up front at the beginning of the question. Culture, right? So oh, sure. you said hip hop culture, um, and it is, man. I remember when it wasn't, but now it is, and it's evolved, and it's just amazing, you know, how how it's just transformed the world. Right, right. Yeah. It's definitely here to stay, uh, just just like pretty much any other uh, major genre of music. So. so, what's your favorite BPM range? You know, like let's just say. Ooh, plus or minus four. Wow. Um, I try to, I, I can, okay, favorite meaning I, I, that's when I let loose and I go into my zone. So yeah. I would say, I would say it would be between, it would be between 84, I'll say 84, 82, I'll, I'll go even lower, 82 to um, 114. That's not plus or minus four. Well, no, I'm, I'm just going by a, a range. <laughs> so that, that's, my range. That's, that's my range, but that's what I do. I mean, so, like, I, I get, all right, so, so you. Let me, let me elaborate. Like like the song that you saw 
like like the song that you saw the other day. I was playing a uh, uh, woke McDonald uh, space. I, I'm trying to make the question hard. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so if it's if it's just one BPM number, no, 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 it's one minus four. Like it could be between I don't know. You said eighty two, so that would be you know eighty two to ninety, right? Or or right, so. I, I, then I, I would say uh, between eight, nine. No, I would go with ninety to ninety-four. Okay. I'll, right. I'll, I'll, so yeah, that I'll, would take you to ninety-eight, right. ninety to ninety-eight, because that's the plus or minus four. So that puts you at ninety-four. Oh, that's a, oh, that's what you're talking about the pitch. Okay, the pitch. Okay. Yeah, 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 because that okay. gives you a little bit more to, to work with. Right. Right. So yeah, that that is correct. Right. Yeah, because there are certain you know, and and of course, I know that. Certain ranges of BPM have a different effect on people, right? Right. So, you know, once you get up around 114 to 119, that's a whole different proposition. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, right. but, but there's also, you know, a zone where you get in and you can stay there all day long. You can. You can. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And that, those 90s, uh, 90s, mid 90s, and, and early uh, 100s, I'll, I'll say like upwards of about like one, 105. Between ninety two and one hundred five. That's my range too, man. I, I just stay there for like two yeah, days. Hours. Yeah, you can be there for hours. So many, <laughs> yeah. You some with that too. And it's a good groove that you don't get yeah. too tired. You don't get too tired. You're not you trying know. to beat you to death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, how you feel about the sync button? I never. Well, that <laughs> I, I, I've been seeing all the posts from that group, the uh, Facebook uh, Live DJ group, and um, and uh, I see so many people, you know, hammering the sync button. But I mean, like, it, it is what it is as far as technology. I mean, if you want to get rid of sync button, then you got to get rid of Serato. And if you want to get rid of Serato, then you need to get rid of the, the uh, controllers. You got to get rid of it all. Then, 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 because I, I did post a question about. Uh, and it, it got a huge response. So, uh, uh, and there's, some passionate, there's some passionate DJs on yeah. our uh, they are thing. <laughs> that's, that's that's where you know that's where you can be a little arrogant and 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 trying to say that you know you're that passionate. No, I think you're just you know a little arrogant because you think your way is the only way, and what they're doing is some BS, and that's not cool. It's so, not cool. It's not cool. So you gotta let people play the way that they play, and right. whatever equipment that's available, you, you can't tarnish them. It's available for anybody to purchase. I'm in so, agreement with you, man. I mean, um, I grew up before 1200s and Gemini's and Newmarks. Uh, they had just came out, but before then, you had the consoles, right? You right. know, where, where you can stack six, seven records on. Everything's on springs. You have right, right, fives. Right. Yeah, <laughs> eight tracks, and that was long, and that's actually how we used to do uh, house parties and things like that. And so, right. you know, before then they had Vic trollers, and before then they had the little cylinders. So, to your point, what you gonna get rid of? Right, you gotta you can't just focus on one thing because I mean, one person actually made a, a point on on the group where uh, if you wanna have a problem with the sync button when it comes to controllers. Then you're gonna have to have a problem with your mixers and your cue points. So I mean, like point taken, yeah, we can do needle drop and just basically then go back to vinyl where you got DJs that's putting tape on the records to actually mark. So that's really no different than that too. True. So you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, hey, the, you can't you can't bark you can't bark at the player. You gotta bark at who's actually supplying the equipment. <laughs> well, to me, you know. Um, having DJ probably in every kind of uh, environment and event that I could think of, um, it always comes down to the audience. That's what, yeah. you know, because um, a lot of times they don't give a damn who we are, right? <laughs> they they just want to make sure that, you know, by the end of the night, they had a good time. They know whether they had a good time or the DJ mm -hmm. sucked, right? right? So So at the end of the day, it's, you know, if you did a New Year's Eve party, all right, you better be epic. Now, whether you do it from, you know, 1200s or controllers or your damn phone or, you know, like, remember they had the little controller come out where you had two um, iPods and you could yeah. DJ off of two iPods, you know, yeah. 
Yeah, that was yeah. short lived, but DJs were using the iPods yeah, to DJ. Yeah. And as long as the crowd feels good and they grooving and they enjoying it and you hitting it, who cares, right? That's it. Who cares? You know? So now, how do you feel about the technology evolution in the profession of DJing? It's great. <laughs> I mean, it's great. I mean, like I actually uh, tried those phase uh, phase three uh, uh, um, uh, um, adapters that you uh, hook up to your uh, on your records, and then you can get rid of the needle on a, on a rec on the on a, on a turntable, so that you don't have to worry about you know replacing you know Serato rock vinyl oh, yeah. or any issues with your needle or anything that's you basically eliminate factors that. Can Let's say right here, this is what you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, the face. So I tried it. If if you know anybody want to buy one, this <laughs> is brand new. Right. I got it for sale. Okay. Um, because I don't use it. <laughs> right. Have you tried it? Have you used it at all? So I ended up getting the newer rain system. That's all of that stuff is built in. Okay. So it's built I like in. the rain twelves are dope. Yeah, I got the I got the MK twos and all that stuff. Right. So so why would I put these on my my twelve hundreds if I got the the rain system? Right. 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 So that's kind of where I'm at. It just be a waste. I, I tried I tried the phase three. Um, it, I don't know. It, it it worked, but something something within me was rejecting it. So I, I don't think know. that's kind of how I feel about. My new system, because I still haven't put enough time into it. There's right. something about lifting that needle up, you know, <laughs> that yeah. I'm used to. Um, yeah. But you don't lift the needle up on a controller, and I got a controller, right? Um, so it's gonna, re it basically, it's gonna require me to put some time into it and, and right. just get used to it. Yeah. So, yeah. but no, no, I'm familiar with that. So now, um, if there's anything you could change, you know. I'm I'm almost willing wanting to say in in the um the industry of DJing, um, but hip hop is a culture. You're in IT, you know. So that the, the whole umbrella of the entertainment industry, um, you know, you're involved in a lot of it. It's not just DJing, but certainly DJing is a part of it. And this is turning the turntables. Um, so, but if there's anything you could change, you know, based on your experience and your journey, what might it be? Uh, could, you, could you repeat that? Kind of sure. If there's anything that you could change in your journey, your experience with DJ and your knowledge, you know, mm -hmm. just just what you know that's out there, um, what might it be? Wow. Um, there are a couple of things, but um, I, 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 there are equipment out there that actually, again, helps uh, those who are novice to uh, being DJ or even handicap for that matter. And they want to, you know, share music that they enjoy and want to, you know, others to hear what they can do. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I will say, you know, as far as on the technical side, it's just to uh, continue on um, progressing and becoming more innovative with, with today's equipment to evolve to another stage. Um, perhaps making, making those uh, who want to venture into this type of uh, platform of entertainment um, to allow them to do their best versus learning, having a learning curve from, you know, from old school type technology. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, like, I think that could be one of the issues that a lot of people are having when it comes to sync buttons and cue points and all of that, because um, you're, you're, you're taking out a lot of the other superficial work from pre-15 to 20 years ago. So, so with that being the case, you kind of like, all right. So he, he's doing a shortcut. He's cheating. He's, right. He's, he's, he's not doing the putting the work in. But the work actually, if, if a person is really into it, allow the equipment to be that Lamborghini. But it's up to that person to drive that car the way it's built to be driven. So I, I use that analogy only to say that again, the equipment is only as good as the person uh, using it. So. If, if it's there as an option, then and it'll actually help perfect their game uh, right. as well as delivery. And hey, let it be the case. So be it. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, 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 could, I don't wish no ill will on anybody using 
any of their uh, effects on on these uh, things. I mean, they they get busy. It's awesome. I uh, like how I like how you introduced you know even um, opportunities for the handicap. Right. You know, and, and certainly I'm I'm 59, you're 50. As I get older, certain things don't work as well as it used to. Right. Um, and who knows? You know, I mean, Tiger Woods was just in an accident, right? Right. And, and ironically, several months ago, I was thinking, because I play golf a little bit, I'm like, you know, if my sciatic is messing me, me up and, and my, my shin is hurting and all that, how can I play golf? What kind of equipment could I design that, you know, I can get out there even if I'm in a wheelchair, and still enjoy the game of golf. And and, and, this, and, and now to add to that, and we go back to your questions as far as the better, uh, what can I add? What can I suggest to help uh, this uh, uh, platform to become better technically? Is to okay, you have controllers. That's a lightweight component, um, and and then you have you know different. You have other type of equipment where it can be all completely integrated, like a controller, such as a, a reins or whatever, but I would say making old school equipment using a different material, making it lighter for those who want to be mobile, but they are, you know, not as agile or have the strength or or the physical capabilities to. Yeah, you, you put two techniques and a mixer in a, in a coffin. You weight lift. Right. I, <laughs> I, I took the weight out of both turntables. Um, there, there's a there's a little stabilizing weight. That's cast into the. That's cast. It, Does it still into, allow you to be heavy handed? No, no, it doesn't affect at all with the, the turntable because I have my table sitting in the coffin, you know, all the time. So yeah, they, yeah. So it's not affecting. So the, the coffin body. stabilizes it, and you ain't got to worry yeah. about how, how much it weighs. Right. So almost like a controller. controller. Almost like a controller. But almost like a controller. So that's what I can suggest is perhaps using a lighter equipment, but I mean lighter material to build the equipment. But then you're talking about. Like a hypercar having a uh, uh, carbon fiber, it's going to increase the, the cost. <laughs> you know, so being lighter will come with a price tag. So, is there anything in this um, industry or culture or this journey of yours of DJing that you would do different? I don't want to say regrets, but you know that you might have done differently. Probably buy equipment earlier. <laughs> Naturally, yeah, um, because because I know without a shadow. Of a doubt that I, I probably, yeah, <laughs> I probably wouldn't been staying in. I don't know. I, I know that I would have been out there with those who, who are major headlines. Um, I mean, you're good, and and, you. and they are too, right? And you know, DJs grade other DJs, and so you know, sometimes you know, it's kind of like basketball, right? Everybody that makes it to the NBA is not necessarily the best basketball player. True. You go back to the schoolyard and you're going to see some people there that can take down these boys all day long in the NBA. Right. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shoot better and everything else. And so, and then they're sitting there watching TV like, man, this boys suck. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> and so, so yeah. Now, um, what advice would you give to an up and coming DJ? Practice. Practice. Um, try to Try to practice on delivery of what you're trying to um, demonst demonstrate or, or even pose to uh, who you are as being that DJ to say, this is me, this is the sound I'm going to deliver, hope you like it. So right. in, order, in order for you to get to that level, it takes practice because you got to make sure that whatever routine that you're going to do, rather if, it, if it's a beat blend, beat juggling, backspin and scratching, you got to practice in order to be completely comfortable in, in, in front and, of and and, to, and flawless. And yeah, yeah. So it takes, it takes practice. And so when you when you develop that, then you you won't have the notion to think that you're going to mess up or, right. or it's already muscle memory basically. So you yeah. know what like your hand. You just feel it. You don't even think you about it. it. You right. don't even think about it. it. You just it do it. it. Yeah, it should flow freely. It should be free yeah. flowing without much effort and, and thought put into it. It just comes naturally, just like breathing. So now, when you DJ, are you dancing? to you know the music the sound the feeling the groove you know almost like your body's a metronome and you into it because some djs be looking too damn static right <laughs> that's true that's true they do yeah I, I like the groove with it um and especially when when i start to when i, when I start to go ahead into a beat juggle I'll, I'll bounce with it and 
And I, I got to give, you know, props to, you know, a lot of the uh, other uh, uh, major uh, DJs such as Scratch and, and, and Cash Money, Scratch Bastard, a whole of Jazzy Jab, a whole list of them jokers. Man. And I'm, you know, basically looking at their YouTube videos and, and their sets from years ago and just, you know, trying to first see if I can do something like that and then try to do something different that has that similar delivery. Um, so I can make it my own versus doing a straight copycat, if you will. Right. So, so you know, that's that's just me kind of trying to teach myself, which goes back to your point about, you know, a, a new up-and-coming DJs, use YouTube. YouTube is your free and, and probably most... I'm learning free. from YouTube. I'm still... So, I mean, I can DJ, you know, been doing it long enough, um, but I'm not great at the crab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing is, I have an ear, right? Um, and I know how. I probably need to spend more time into it, you know, because of my day job. But the point is, once I master the crowd, the crab, the way I want to, uh, and comfortably, I'm gonna put some sound out, man. Right. right. <laughs> so so I, I have that problem too because I, I have big hands. I right. Big hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and they, they're, they're thick hands. Um, and the problem with that is, is keeping your hands closed to do an actual crab. Right. And, the thumb. and, and I wondered if that's a, a a small hand or a small person technique. And I was looking at uh, DJ. I don't Kubert. know, because what's the DJ name that Q-Bert, Qbert used to teach him? Um, I think the guy's Filipino. He's kind of big. And he, oh, right. That's that's uh, uh I think the shortcut that you're talking about. Yeah, he, he's shortcut. got big hands. He has big hands, but I wonder if his fingers are stubby though. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's my only problem. So, so I, I I have a problem with it too. I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't do a crash scratch. I've been trying, and and Qbert actually uh, did a, a YouTube segment explaining how they came up with the uh, crab scratch, and it was between him and Miss Match the Mike when they were on tour. So uh, apparently they they actually call it the crap scratch because that's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. So so in essence, um, I kind of I've been trying and I, I actually uh, I think I think it was a year and a half ago I went to get a uh, a fader called um, what is it the interfader. Mm -hmm. interfader. I tried that and put that into my uh, mixer because I was hoping that. That fader because the rain mixers, uh, the sixty two is what I have. The faders are so very light; they 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 glide really lightly. So I need some resistance because my thumb is pushing up on the fader too tight. So I can't, you know, use my thumb muscle to say, okay, relax a little bit and just be, be a spring. So what I'm what I'm looking for is a fader that has a built in spring, so I can have more resistance. So the rain, the resistance. new mixer MK two. It's got a knob on there that adjusts the tension of the crossfader. So you, can, you can have it, you can have it just as glide, you know, glide and slide as you want, or right. you can have it resistance where you gotta put a little something into it. Where you gotta put a little something into it. And, right. and, and, and it. and you can reverse it. You can, I mean, yeah. you can you can do the, the, the straight cross. Now, some people don't know a lot about what we talk about, but you know what I'm talking about, like that or like that, you know, or like right. that. And so yeah. it's got it all in there. See, that's that's what that's what was in the interfader. And you have like a couple of fruit and then you just twist it or whatever. But I wasn't getting what I was trying to, it's, it's not giving me that, that that type of resistance that I'm looking for. So I'm working I, on it too. So yeah, but, you know, so, why these days I'll get you over here and, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 you know, we'll show each other something. So yeah, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. So, so what's next for you, man? You know, I know we're in, in the pandemic. Um, and it kind of slowed a few of us down, but you broke the code on how to still be out there and right. social distance and, and give the people some music. Um, but what's next for you? It's 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 really whatever. I, I haven't really uh, when I say whatever, meaning like I'm just available to do. You know, if somebody needs some some music to play or whatever, I'm completely mobile. So, like I said, I can load everything up in my car and be outside in the park away from everything. And what kind of car you said that was? Yeah, I have a 99 Trans Am. A Trans Am. I ain't heard of Trans Am in a long time. Right. So this is a six-speed. Um, it has a 427 in it. Um, 
Uh, it's a dark block with supercharger on it and nitrous, and I'm running E85. So this car is going to be pulling wheels up, running low. What color? What color is it? Because when I hear Trans Am, I'm thinking about the yellow one or white. No, like, this is this is a '99, so this is like the last body style of it. It's okay. black. Um, I got it from Philly as a roller, and a roller is basically without a motor and transmission. Okay. So okay. It had, it had flames. It has flames on it. That's airbrushed professionally on it, but it needs a, a better paint job or some paint uh, uh, correction on it. Yeah, we'll see, and we'll see this Trans Am on April 7th. Yeah, April 7th. Anytime, basically, anytime I go out to DJ, I'm gonna, if the car is working, I don't have no problems with it, I'm going to put everything in the car. Because that, that there is like a, a talking piece in itself. Like, how do you get this stuff in <laughs> so, so we're coming to the close of the session. Um, right. Is there anything that you would like to say, maybe I didn't ask the right question, the most appropriate question, or you just had a thought that you wanted to make sure you communicated? Is there anything you would like to say? Well, just to, just to test, uh, touch base back on that uh, last question about, um, you know, what, what I would like to, I, I like to get, um, I like to be uh, given opportunity to uh, showcase and, and, and just show, demonstrate what I can do um, to the degree as to what's being asked for me to deliver. So in, in essence, what I'm saying is, is and go back to the point about a bedroom DJ in the basement, basically in the home. So I definitely want to try to get into the market of having a residency as what DJs have been saying as, as them having, you know, club residency or some right. place at a hotel or whatever. I mean, I don't, I don't think that this is going <laughs> to uh, 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 substitute what I do as, uh, as to earn income. But as far as with just getting more notoriety, and uh, just getting my uh, 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 getting my name out there, and, and that, so that people are like, "Oh, he DJ B Blast, he's he's gonna lay it down, man. Y'all gotta sit here and just watch him. He's gonna let you, he's gonna get you dancing too." So I just want I want those types of uh, uh, talks to be out there amongst folks and, and the expectation. So because that's what I'm gonna deliver every time. I'm right. pretty much never gonna change. You know. Well, you so, know, after this pandemic is over, what I what I also plan to do is have like a session where maybe I have about 10 or 15 DJs and we talk, right? And some of those DJs are celebrity DJs and radio DJs and, you know, with that level of experience. And now that network and that collaboration from meeting each other, you know, um, DJ Wildchild, like, you know, he's he's a big celebrity DJ in this area. Uh, he's put a lot of DJs on, made a lot of DJs that are now on the radio. Uh, and so he's kind of like, you know, uncle, DJ Wildchild to a lot of them, right? Like, um, but he'd be a great guy for you to meet, and he's just humble. Uh, he's awesome. So that's cool. I wanna, I wanna first of all, you know, DJ B Blast Brian. I wanna thank you for saying yes. Um, I also wanna thank you for helping me to pioneer this, uh, you know, Zoom style interview. I'm used to people being right here in, yeah, in the right. studio. So right. this one's different. Um, and then when I do the, the editing to put it out there on uh, YouTube and whatnot, um, I'm going to learn how, to, you know, I'm going to learn it because it's a different footage. Uh, so, but you'll definitely get a copy of it. Um, but just thank you, man. And, and, and you and your wife stay safe. Thank you. And uh, I look forward to uh, more music coming out you. You know, I, I follow you. So, you know, I'll see you out there. Right. That's what Any I'm questions of me before we close out? Oh wow. <laughs> um, questions. So I, I, again, and, and I definitely appreciate this segment that you have, uh, uh, DJ Doctor. Uh, 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 <laughs> sorry, Doctor uh, D. Reggie B. Uh, Reggie B. Doctor Reggie B. Sorry, <laughs> I had a brain cramp. I was thinking of a bunch of questions. Cause Basically, um, <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm in an interview in a job, and, and that's what I always go into. Once I'm being asked, uh, do I have any questions? And I have a slew of questions. So that's what happens. Uh, that was just kind of had a lot of questions coming up in my head at one time. So uh, again, I definitely appreciate this uh, uh, segment that you uh, that you host. Um, it's it's uh, uh, gratifying that you know the the concentration of this meeting is 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 about DJing or turntablism or, or the art of being a turntablist. And it, it's great. It's a great platform. I commend you on that. Thank you. Um, yes. So um, you, gave, you gave me a lot of history as far as, you know, you being from Philly. 
and um, you know, uh, uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, sets with uh, uh, DJ sets with um, uh, different celebrities, and um, and that's that's dope. And um, appreciate you sharing that with me. And um, yeah, really, you know, I'm, I'm trying to I was trying to think of some questions, but a lot of a lot of the information that you share with me um, kind of answer those questions as I'm replaying it in my mind. Filled so, in the blanks. Filled in the blanks. Yeah. Filled in the blanks. So in essence, you know, I, I was thinking of, you know, I see, I see that, you know, Facebook, DJ Live, they have their groups and, you know, it's it's 35 plus thousand people. And they, they it's a lot of us. It's a lot of DJs. It's a lot of DJs. So, you know, and there's some other groups out there too that court that relates to either Serato or Rain or your other type of, uh, 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 software platforms to use to uh, to project music and as well as equipment too. So it be twelves or Pioneer. There are groups out there for or even techniques uh, in the sense of what you do as a uh, as a as a turntablist when it comes to beat blending or or just straight beat juggling or scratching. Or oh whatever. yeah, there, there's a whole host of educational YouTubes out there. Right, yeah. right, and uh, all of that all of that is highly appreciative. It's, it's great to see that you know that I'm a part of a. a, a, a uh, art an artistry where it's so vast and it's global and it's great. So you're part of it, man. You're part of the family. <laughs> so on that note, yeah, I, I don't have. Uh, I was trying to think of some questions, but no, don't was, worry. I'm not trying to reverse the interview. You know, yeah. <laughs> I was straight. I was like, um, perhaps I could probably, probably, you know, uh, throw on a little, a little quick. You gonna show us something? A quick joint, even though I, I was gonna try to pan the phone down. I like, I like for people to see the. See me on the turntables versus okay. just seeing me, and that's that's one of I won't say that's one of the big turnoffs, but when when I see that uh, folks are just you know showing themselves versus showing either the equipment or them on, the I got a pet peeve about that also. Right, right. I want to see I want to see your hands. <laughs> I'm watching your face. I see you in all of your gear, whatever you're wearing, and all of the stuff in the background that shouldn't be there. But I can't see your hands. Right. Not that I don't believe that you DJ. <laughs> I just want to see. Right, it could be pre-recorded, so all studio mix down and everything, and they just making it seem like. And, and that goes to the effect of some DJs and music videos from back in the day, where me being particular to where I am, I'm watching to see what you're doing when you're opening and closing the fader, moving your hand back and forth. If it's actually lining up to the sound, even though it's not live, it's a video, a music video. paying attention i mean it's like you could do you know i mean it's so easy a caveman could do it right so no i get it i get it um most of the time when i dj you know i want people to see my hands i want people to hear my mistakes you know what i mean i, I want people to see up oh, he missed q or he did this like i mean i'm a dj you know i'm you're gonna make a mistake so if 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 you playing and you don't make a single mistake ever, and I never saw your right. hands, I'm right. like, is that a recording? A is studio? That, Did you that, do that in the studio and now you pretended? <laughs> like the conversion, is that is that is that is that real? Is it Memorex? Yeah, is that live or Memorex, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so what you gonna do, man? Because I, I mean, we can get some footage and I can edit it in to the um, to the set. For things to do is to blend different music that you just wouldn't think that should go together you know what i'm saying and and like going back into uh some of the other sets that are done with um uh, uh facebook live i was uh, also blending some joints from the 1940s um and it was kind of more like hip-hop too they did what they were doing was rhyming right so, yeah, oh yeah like, oh yeah like, definitely um yeah right so there, there's one in in january when I was, you know, you know, giving shout outs for the new year and folks to, you know, celebrate the new year and everything. And, and I did a, a couple of joints uh, that were had 1940s uh, uh, songs on it and, and, you know, put a, up, up, you know, a new what you gonna, so what you going to do now? I'm trying to keep everything within a certain time frame for when we put this back out to the audience. Gotcha. So I'm going to put on sardines and I'm going uh, to blend it in with a video game. Okay. So, 
I'm, I'm gonna let you figure out what the video game is. All right, here we go. All right, Pac Man. <laughs> <laughs> It's not coming through as clear as I want it. It should be. So, so, um, no, first of all, that's cool. I wish the sound quality of the music was a little bit better, but wow. it's coming through the speakers and not direct line and nothing you can do about that. Um, but I'm still trying to figure out the, um, the video game. Now, keep in mind, I'm a little <laughs> bit older. So I'm thinking like Centipede or um, Tetra. <laughs> or, like Nintendo, Nintendo Mario Brothers. Oh, Mario, Mario Brothers! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was listening. To, I'm like, okay, okay. So, so yeah, that's that's what I've been uh, kind of working on. Is like old school stuff. It could be turn your game. camera up so we can see. Oh, oh, yeah, my bad. Right. Bring the camera back. You just uh, muted the microphone and you muted the camera. Mike, Mike is back. Mike is gone. Okay. Got them big fingers, man. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, get back to the video. I can't even see. No worries. Um, but we're getting ready to close. And so... Um, um, you still here? I'm still here, definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I but I definitely appreciate you uh, taking me up on the offer. Uh, when I saw that you were in Maryland, I said to reach out to you just to talk. I, it would have been great if you were over here, but this was a, a good good uh, um, maiden voyage, um, learning how to do it through Zoom and be able to put it back out to the audience for them to see. Right. So meanwhile, man, you and your bride stay safe. And uh, you have my number and my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me anytime. Of course, if I hear of any opportunities for DJing, you're now on my list, so I can cool. I can refer you people. I like referring DJs because um, I know the game. I know how this is, you know. And so, uh, all this equipment you see behind me, um, it's it's probably a whole lot more, and it's a control right. against the wall. But right. you know, it paid for itself, right? It's from right. DJing, so. Um, I, I would I love to be able to put other DJs in a, in a position to be able to grow their business, grow their their equipment. And, uh, you know, the more money you make, the more money you have to, for your equipment. So, right. all right, you be safe. Thank you. And to the audience, this is DJ Dr. Reggie B. I'm here with DJ B Blast, uh, turning the turntables. Thank you for listening. And you too, be safe. Thank you. Thank you again, DJ Dr. Reggie B. <laughs> All right, brother. I will talk to you. Okay.